What's up everybody? Welcome back to the shop. It is time for another big Glowforge project. Today I'm going to be actually remaking one of my early Glowforge projects that I made before I had the YouTube channel, so there's no footage of it. But I'm going to be remaking Jack Sparrow's Compass, but a whole lot better. Uh, you may have seen it if you follow me on Instagram, or you may have seen it if you follow Glowforge on Instagram, because back when I did it, they actually posted it on their page, which was pretty cool of them. So hopefully with this one, I can one-up myself and make an even better one. There were a lot of things I wasn't happy with with this one. I'm going to fix all of them. Main things I'm going to change are the dimensions are off on this one, so I've edited the CAD. And also, on this one I used Walnut for the dark, which did not turn out as dark as I'd wanted it to. So instead, I'm going to be using this, which I believe is pronounced Wenge. Uh, it's spelled like that. Uh, it's some African hardwood that I got. It was the darkest one I could find. So there isn't much to this intro. Uh, let's go to the laser. But first, you got to make sure you like and subscribe. Because it, it just makes everybody's day better. In fact, not to threaten you, but uh, the video is not going to continue until you do like and subscribe. Um, so yeah, you're just gonna have to do that. Uh, I'm just gonna stand here and wait till you do, because there's nothing I can do about it. The video cannot continue until you are liked and subscribed. If you are already liked and subscribed and you're wondering why it's still waiting, it's because someone isn't you. Not, not you, you. Uh, you haven't done it yet, and I need you to do that. There you go. So, doing that will make sure that you don't miss out on any of my awesome future builds and it helps me grow the channel and make even bigger cooler projects. So without further ado, let's head to the laser because this thing just broke on me. So, gotta fix it. So first, before I head to the laser, I need to cut off a piece of this and plane it down to about half its thickness uh, because the white wood I'm gonna be using here is, I'm gonna be using proof grade oak and I need to match its thickness and this is the thinnest one I can get. So I'm just gonna chop a piece of this off, plane it down, Head to the laser. Random tangent here. You know that California's Prop 65 warning is really stupid when it comes on pieces of wood. I mean, it's just a piece of wood. It's not like it's a toxic chemical. They're, they're putting these stickers on everything that become pointless. So this is currently broken as of a few minutes ago. But as you can see, the way that I made this is I cut out little tiny pieces and strips and just glued them all together. So that's exactly what I'm gonna be doing here. This does spin, but not very well and it doesn't have any compass wobble to it. I have a plan to fix that. Also, this middle thing, it doesn't have enough shape to it. Some parts are too thick. And I may actually use some 23 karat gold that I have left over from my Iron Man helmet. By the way, watch that video right there. Right there, it's a pretty good one. After this one, go watch that one. And also that, yeah, I just need to clean that up. This is the two pieces of what I'm gonna use. This has some tape on it, so you can tell, but it's the Glow Forge Proof Grade uh, Maple. I think I said oak earlier, but I'm using maple. And then we got the Wenge here. You can see the thickness difference. So I got my calipers, got a planer, it's time to get it down to size. We basically took this planer to its limit. So now we got two that are basically the same size. This is actually the exact same piece of wood I used for some of the last compass. Don't know why it still exists after like three years, but I've since cleaned up the design and it's a lot more efficient than that. So I should be able to only use what's left here because this is the last piece I have. Here you can see my CAD. I've done it in three different sections because I guess that's how I did it three years ago. I've since gone in and modified it. So this design was made mo using just screenshots because I could not find any usable dimensions online. So I found this screenshot from one of the movies and I traced that into AutoCAD. Here is the way I designed it and I took all of the parts and put them into a more material efficient use. So there we have the bottom of the compass, we have the lid of the compass, again same thing, design, and then split up into all its pieces, and then all the other little bits and bobs. While I'm here, if you use the link in the description, you can get up to $500 off one of these awesome laser cutters. By far one of the best laser cutters I've used definitely has the best engraving and the best user interface of any laser cutter I've ever used. And I've used a few. Use that link in the description, get up to $500 off, and you'll be benefiting the channel too. By far has the best engraving capabilities I've ever seen. Uh, you can see good examples of that in my videos. Uh, engraving a pumpkin, I've got two of those. And engraving on painted aluminum, that was a good one. Anyway, let's get to the computer and cut this thing out. So here it is. I managed to basically cut out exactly the amount of wangi I needed. So here are all the dark pieces, and here are all the maple pieces, which include engraving the dial.
everything came out really good except for the compass rose, which turned out not as dark as I would have liked. I had the speed a little fast. You can see on my old one, it's a lot darker. So I'm going to redo just this. Luckily, I do have some proof grade maple plywood. And because this piece, the edges don't matter. On all of these other pieces, the seeing the edge of the wood really matters. Uh, so I used hardwood for it. But because for this, all that matters is the face. I can redo it in plywood, a nice veneered plywood that is, and I should be able to get just fine of a piece and make it look a lot better than that one. All these pieces will be glued together with just plain super glue. I usually would use an activator here to make the super glue cure instantly, but I don't have any and I don't have time to go get any. I've got a piece of aluminum from an old Mac and I've done some tests. Super glue does not stick to this very well, so I can lay everything down on here and it will stick to here and I can easily pop it off. There's not much more talking to do. I'm just gonna start assembling. If I show you on my old compass, what I'm gonna do, assemble the face, assemble each of the sides on both the top and bottom and then I'll have to do a bit of grinding and sanding in order to get them to fit together into the box itself. Cue the time lapse and listen to some cool music I found from this guy. got all the flat pieces done and they are now mostly stuck down to this piece of aluminum but if I take a chisel and a little hammer they pop right off and I do have sanding to do on them but that's completely fine I can sand them. This piece right here is what will be the section of lid and it is a little bit smaller and darker. But after I pop all these off what I'm gonna have to do as you can see here I've there's a little notch, but I'm gonna have to file a notch in all the corners, and I'm just gonna be using regular file, and I'll use the corner, get a nice little notch in there. And I'm not gonna bother filming that. Since these are the edges, and they've got square ends right now, and they need to fit around a hexagon, I need to chamfer the edge. And so what I've done is I've got my belt sander over here, set it to 20 degrees, and I'm just gonna nip all the corners of all these pieces. You don't need to watch that, but it'll allow them to nicely fit together around a hexagon. And with that, you can see the angle. I have remedied two problems that I had with the last compass. Last time when I was sanding these, uh, I knocked some of these off and had to go remake them. I also got the wrong angle. And as you can see here, I had to fill in gaps with putty. But this time that is a perfect hexagon angle, perfect seam. Off camera on both of these pieces, I have filed little notches everywhere and got everything to fit properly. So you can see here, this now slides in like that. And don't worry about this black edge, that'll be set it off, that's just from the laser. So now I'm gonna assemble all of these. And since this piece is really weak, I've cut out this little support. It'll be glued right in there. camera I have fit up these two pieces. I've just done a little bit of sanding, got the top lid here, got the base here. So this piece will go in here as the bottom and this piece goes all the way in as a bit of support and to create the back which I will later go in and hollow out on the lathe. Again as usual just using super glue. I've got little marks to get it lined up properly. There we go. Now the slightly harder one this piece doesn't go all the way in. And it looks like I did the fit up pretty good. Just tiny little gaps here and there, but this will all be sanded down and fit much nicer. I won't have to do what I did on the last one and put a piece of walnut veneer on the bottom to hide all the bad holes and stuff. It's coming together nicely so far. So next, I'm gonna stack up these three rings. Okay, so we're gonna put the worst looking one on the bottom because it's the one that won't be seen at all, which is this one. Number two, and number three. I put this on my lathe, and I'm just gonna turn down this outside into a nice little dome. Then I'm gonna flip it over and carve a little concave area on the backside. One 
big thing I want to change about this old compass is that this piece right here, I don't know what to call it, this piece is much too square. In the movie, it has a bit of an angle to it. I'm gonna champ for these edges, uh, but you don't want to watch that, so let's spin it real quick, just like that. And now we've got chamfered edges. The inside looks a little ugly, but it'll be covered up with those two dots, one on top, one on the bottom. I'm keeping the hole at the moment so that I can find the exact center. So another big thing I'm changing is on this one, you can see the compass spins, but it is on a hard drive bearing that I had left over from something else. And it spins, but it doesn't rock like a compass does. Uh, it doesn't matter that it doesn't point north because if you've seen the movie, it doesn't point north in the movie. So what I'm going to do this time, I'm gonna find the center and I'm gonna put a nail in the end. And this is the, the not good one, but I'm gonna put a little ring on the bottom and then this is just gonna balance on the nail. That way it'll spin and have that compass wobble. So I'm gonna mark this through a little, tiny little hole. Kind of ugly, but I put this little piece of wood with a hole in it. It's the size of a nail right in the center. And I've got the compass here, just got a little ring on it. So the nail will go in between that hole and ring, and then I'll have a nice wobbly spinning compass. Here's this middle piece so far. It is either gonna be gold leafed or I will use some gold rub and buff on it. So there's this piece, and then you can kind of see how it's gonna go together, kind of like that. Up next is to paint the inside of the lid black. And I'll be painting this dome section, probably like a blue or a purple. And there'll be some stars painted in there. And then this outer rim will be covered by some thick leather that I got that I will cut out on the laser. First, I'm gonna paint it just using some black paint that I have laying around. Here's the roll of fake leather that I have. Cut a piece. I've got my pattern right there that I measured. So I'm just gonna pop it in the laser, cut it out, and it should be pretty easy. So I've mixed up some paint to get the correct shade of blue. I hope it's right. All right, so I'm gonna paint just the dome area. Yeah, that looks good. So as you can see, second compass turned out much better. And I gotta quickly paint in red. Unfortunately, the only paint I have is this red model paint, but I think it'll do. So I'm just gonna go in here and paint this. I still have the paper on it from the laser cutting, so that should make it easier. It may look a little messy, but that's just because the paper's still on it. Since I don't have the ideal brush, I was able to go over the lines a little bit. So I'll just peel off the paper and that should look perfect. Paint is now dry. Edges don't matter at all because this piece of leather will fit right in there. It's just a little detail. It cost me like 15 bucks, but I have a lot of thick leather left over for something else. As with everything else in this project, I'm gonna lay down some super glue and come in with this laser cut piece of leather. By the way, again, link in the description for $500 off the Glyphorge, and that's the kind of precision you can get out of it. Everything is now assembled. This just has to be gold leafed. Got the box here and the compass with the little ring on the bottom. I'm actually going to put a finish on this now because the gold leaf stuff will go in last, that way I don't damage it, and this will go in about at the same time, and the hinge and the clasp will have to go on after it's finished. I'm just going to use this Shello Wax Friction Polish. It's made for lathes, but I'm just going to use it for this anyway, and put a nice coat on this entire thing. There we go, we got the much improved dark colors. You can see the difference to why I switched from Walnut to Wingate. Now I'm gonna put the hinge and the clasp on. So I did buy this hinge here. I could not find any hinges that I liked without any screw holes in it. I'm not really liking this one, but I do like the one on the old one. So what I'm thinking is I'm just gonna take the hinge off of this, it's already broken, and put this new hinge on the old one and the good hinge on the new one. I've also got this clasp here, it's pretty close the top half is almost exactly what it is in the movie. The bottom half is not. Uh, I, all I have to do though is trim off these decorative bits on the sides and give it just a like a pin like I did on this one. So the only downside to these at the moment is they're brass and therefore very shiny. So I'm gonna weather them with a torch. Quick little trick. You just beat up brass with a torch and it should discolor it.
closer. And you can see they're not shiny anymore and much more weathered and look more like they've been on a ship. So it is time for hardware. I'm gonna start with this piece here. And since I have one side that's a little bad, I'm gonna use that for the hinge. So it'll hide it nicely and make sure the hinge doesn't glue shut. And I just super glued my finger to it. Yep, so I just lost some skin. Ran into a slight issue here. The back of this clasp is so close to the material that the super glue just gummed it up. So instead, I'm gonna have to use the tiny little nails that it came with. I didn't think I was originally gonna be able to use these. There you go. But I think in this particular case, I will be able to. Finally get to use the little hammer I made in my first machining class. And until I clean up the hinges, it sounds like a seagull. nautical theme if you think about it. All right, so I finally have everything attached. Got rid of the seagull sound, so now it opens nice and smooth. Got the nails in. It was actually destroyed a few nails trying to get those in. Looks a lot better. You can see the color difference between the old and the new, and also the size comparison. I made it shorter, much more accurate to the movie. But now it is time to have some fun with gold. So here's the sundial piece. It's all assembled and I got the compass rose. Both of these, this one's gonna get entirely covered in gold. And on this one, I'm gonna try and cover just the X's. Got some leafing glue and I've got some 23 karat gold leaf that I've left over from my Iron Man helmet. By the way, you should go watch that video after this one. It's a good one. The gold leafing is not too exciting to watch. So I'll go to time-lapse and that'll make it a little more interesting at least. I actually ended up putting a lot more gold on the compass rose than I thought I would. Uh, it didn't come out perfect, but I think that's fine because it's supposed to be a little worn. And then here's this part. Doesn't look perfect, but it looks pretty good. It is time for the final assembly. You can see in there I've got a little nail. That is what the compass face will balance on with that little ring. I'm gonna drop this in. Just gonna put a drop of super glue on each of these points. And then I'm just gonna line it up. These little gaps here are a little sticky at the moment. It should ungum itself with time. You can see that we have a spinning compass with a little bit of wobble. Compass is almost done. One last thing to do. On this little concave bit, there are some stars. Now in the movie, they seem to be random. Uh, I am gonna choose and do the Big and Little Dipper because why not have something north related in a compass that doesn't point north? So I've got some rub and buff here. on the bottom, Polaris right there, and the Big Dipper on top. And that right there is Jack Sparrow's compass completed. to do especially with the glowforge laser cutter because i'm a huge fan of their product uh, and again if you use the link in my description you can get up to 500 dollars off one of those awesome machines and try and make something as cool as me not sure if you can if i do say so myself but you can try and also if you use that link you'll be helping to support the channel and help me make even cooler stuff so i hope you like this video if you want to see more make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell because i post irregularly and you don't want to miss anything so in not the words of jack sparrow thanks for watching may your rub never be gone and i'll see you next time